Hi, my name's Ricky, and I'm what some people would call a quote-unquote small streamer. That is to say that I don't have tens of thousands of followers on Twitter, nor do I have an enormous following on Twitch. So this isn't going to be the kind of video where I tell you how to grow your following or the five secrets of my success. But what I do want to talk about is a couple of the things that I have noticed, and particularly one of the most important and also one of the hardest things to apply as a small streamer, and that is not comparing yourself to other people. But before we talk about that more, I want to talk about planes. You might recognize this diagram. Back during World War II, the US military was very interested in where they should be reinforcing the armor on their bombers. They decided that the best course of action was to look at the planes that were coming back from missions and reinforce the, their armor in the areas where they had been shot. It makes sense, right? Now, a group of statisticians, including Abraham Wald, looked at the exact same data, but they came to a very different conclusion. They said, that's all well and good, but there are some number of planes out there that you sent out on missions that were shot at and were not able to come back. So the planes that you're looking at are the ones that survived. Case in point, this is actually the textbook example of what we call a survivorship bias. So I know what you're probably thinking. Why is this silly deer talking to me about planes and statistics? I'm here to learn about streaming. Well, it turns out that survivorship bias is very prevalent in streaming. So I went on over to YouTube and I put Twitch growth into the search bar and lo and behold, there is an entire media ecosystem that is set up around content creators making videos promising that they have the secret to how you can actually grow on Twitch in whatever year. And if you put the term partner in there, they even start to get a little bit accusatory, stuff like, why are you not doing these kinds of things? And if you look at these videos, some of them have tens of thousands of views, some of them even have over a hundred thousand views, but there's an issue with the math, because Twitch doesn't actually have that many partnered streamers. So how does this actually work out? If these videos are really promising the secret, and they are as popular as they are, then why aren't there more partnered streamers? So I did a quick Google search, and I found that about of the 2.2 million active broadcasters currently on Twitch, only about 27,000 have been pulled into the partner program. Now, think back to some of those videos a second ago. Some of them have over 100,000 views. So how do we make sense of this, where there's all these videos with an enormous number of views that are promising quick pathways to partnership, and yet there aren't more partners? Well, the answer is, once again, you guessed it, survivorship bias. Because it turns out that on platforms like Twitch, on YouTube, Facebook gaming, what have you, the usual trajectory for a streamer is a slower and more linear pattern of growth. That is to say that you steadily accumulate followers and all that over time. However, there are some people that do find explosive exponential patterns of growth, but they are the exception and not the rule. Now, another compounding factor here, though, is that because of the nature of social media and algorithms and who gets picked up by it, those people are given the biggest megaphones, and if you're around streaming spaces like VTuber Twitter like I am, there are no shortage of people that will happily tell you what you're doing wrong and how you can make partner if you just change a couple of things because that's what worked for them, and if you, if you just listen to them, you're going to figure it out. They make it seem easy. And because they have such large platforms, sometimes it's very difficult to even ignore or to not run across these messages because they're actively being promoted to you. Now, just as another reality check, I couldn't find this number, I mean, maybe somebody knows it, but I'm going to go ahead and conjecture that the modal number of viewers on Twitch at any given point is probably close to zero. There are a staggering number of people that are streaming right now as you are watching this to maybe no one or only a handful of people, but you almost never hear about them. The people you hear are the ones with the big megaphones and the big platforms. And if you start making comparisons to the people around you or the people that you perceive as being around you, speaking personally and some of the stories that I've seen from the past couple of months of my streaming, that you might end up feeling like you are the only one that is struggling. You are the only one that feels stuck. 
Everyone else around you feels like they're making partner in six months and there is something wrong with you personally. And that's not realistic and that's not healthy, but it is hard to avoid because of just the nature of these platforms. The nature of these platforms and the nature of viral media like streaming and content creation also means that you really just can't be good. There are a lot of people out there that are extremely creative and doing a great job that you have never heard of. The reality is you have to be good and lucky. And in the context of streaming, especially as a VTuber, maybe your content or your design catches the attention of a popular account and they start helping you kickstart your following really without you having to do anything. Or maybe you're already involved in a niche of content that becomes a fad and that propels your early growth. These are things that can make a huge difference for someone early on, and yet they're things that might be totally out of a person's control. However, the interest of companies like YouTube and Facebook Gaming and Twitch and all these platforms is in making you feel like you are not working hard enough and that you have more control than you probably realistically do. Because if you feel like you're not doing enough, you're probably going to be more inclined to work harder to produce more content for their platforms and so on and so forth. So it kind of makes sense why you wouldn't want to compare to someone, right? Because you don't really know the whole story behind other people. You know that there's a whole industry about making money or driving views or curating content around your insecurity. And it's really hard to even get good information because in the whole streaming ecosystem, a lot of people that have expectations of exponential growth but find slower linear growth might drop out. So you don't really hear from those people and the people that are exceptions, that is to say, have really massive exponential growth are given huge platforms and promoted to you. So this is the part of the video where I'd love to give you some magic words that are going to turn off the social comparison part of your brain. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those. As much as I can lay out all the logical reasons it doesn't make sense to compare yourself to other people, I'm also guilty of doing it. And at the end of the day, that impulse that drives those social comparisons is not a logical one. One of the toughest parts of streaming, at least that I've found, is that there's often never really a clear, concise, and consistent correct answer for how to go forward. So when you naturally come to these forks in the road, it might make sense to look to your left and to your right to see what other people are doing, and also how other people are doing. But for the reasons I outlined earlier, that can be self-defeating because you're more likely to see people that are exceptions than are actually the norm or really in a similar position to you. So you might look over and you might see somebody that seems to have a cuter character design, or you might see somebody who seems to be funnier and better at using props. Or, worse still, you might encounter somebody who seems to be very similar to you. Maybe they started streaming around the same time, but they've had far more success in terms of attracting followers and subscribers. But the secret of VTubing is that as much as this person might feel like they materialized out of thin air and just emerged as this flawless content creator, that's not the case. For all you know, or I know, this might not be that person's first character. They might be popular on another platform. Maybe even this is a new project for them and they're already an established streamer and this VTubing thing is new, or they have famous and established friends that are helping promote them. There are all kinds of outside factors that could be skewing their success or driving their rise to fame, but that's not going to stop my brain from making those comparisons just because I logically know those things. So trust me, I know that this is really hard. However, I do want to say that making these kinds of comparisons has never made me want to work harder or has made me feel better about myself. That motivation has only ever come from trying to focus on the things that I can control. I do things that I think are fun for me, and I try to center my own enjoyment when I'm setting up my schedule for what I'm going to be doing in the week even if that means that I miss out on some trends. As a practical suggestion, turning off my viewer counts has actually been one of the best things that I've done for myself in terms of streaming. And if Jeff Bezos were to come down from his rocket ship tomorrow, and he were to say, Ricky, I want you to be in the Twitch partner program, but under the condition that you can't play Chex Quest anymore or any of those other weird games that you like, I don't think I'd take the offer. After all, this is supposed to be fun. It doesn't have to be a job, no matter how much these platforms want you to think of it as one. And 
If the reality of streaming growth is that it tends to be a long process that's drawn out over time, I don't know about you, but personally, I'd rather enjoy the ride. So I guess in closing, what I want to impart here, uh, both to myself in the future and whoever's watching this, is that if at the end of the day, you're going to bed and you're thinking, you know what, this is still fun. Even if you didn't make a banger tweet, even if you didn't get a YouTube upload up, even if you didn't stream, as long as you're still having fun, you are doing enough. So try to just consider that. And I'm going to also probably be checking this out in the future to remind myself when I'm having a rough time. But that's the end of it, really. So I hope this was helpful. I had a lot of fun doing this. So yeah, take care and have fun.